Hey there my wedding planning friends and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, thanks so much for clicking on my video. I'm Emily Summer, I'm a wedding planner based in Montana and I make weekly videos on wedding planning tips and advice. So we are entering what us in the wedding industry tend to refer to as engagement season and that is pretty much the, the fall, the holidays, and winter months. A lot of people tend to get engaged. So I wanted to do a video all about you know, what you should be doing right when you get engaged. Um, I think a lot of people get engaged and then are a little bit stumped on like what the next step should be, what your first step should be, what your priority should be. So today we're gonna talk all about the six most important things to do right after getting engaged. So the first thing you're going to do after you get engaged is obviously you're going to tell your friends and family. So first step is to celebrate, tell the people that are close to you and don't feel super rushed to make any decisions, you know, right away. Feel free to enjoy this time, celebrate your engagement, have an engagement party if that's something you want to do and tell your friends and family however you choose to do that. I know you're going to want to start to do the fun stuff. Um, it's easy to get engaged and then start looking at wedding colors and start looking at wedding dresses and flowers and venues and all of that and that will come. Um, but the very first thing you should do before any of that, before making any sort of decisions about your wedding is to sit down and talk about a budget. And I know that's probably the least attractive part of wedding planning, but it is an absolute must. And if you can knock this out right away in the beginning and take care of it and understand what you're looking at as far as what your overall budget is going to be and where that money is coming from, whether it's you and your partner are supplying financially for the wedding or if you have money coming from your families and kind of allocating where that's going to go and, and how much money you are allotting to your overall wedding is going to make every decision you make here on out wedding planning that much easier. So really prioritize sitting down and talking to your partner about what your budget is and also categorizing that budget. So I've done um, a couple different videos on wedding budgets that I'll link above for you to kind of talk a little bit more in detail about creating this wedding budget and kind of what to expect when it comes to having a budget for a wedding. So then number three, before, again, before you make any of the fun decisions, you want to sit down and write a guest list. And this is kind of a tedious task and again, not a super attractive part of wedding planning, but your guest list is really going to determine a lot of uh, factors moving forward when you're wedding planning. So knowing what your guest count is going to be or like having a, a good rough idea of how many people you plan to invite is going to affect the venue because it could affect you know, the capacity that your dream venue might allow. You might be over capacity if you are looking at venues and, and you realize your guest list is about 300 people and the dream venue that you want at max is out at 150. Those sorts of things need to be figured out before you start making those actual planning decisions. So sit down and draft a guest list with your partner. Um, you might need to bring in parents or family members or somebody to kind of help with this as well, um, depending on how deep you're getting into your guest list, but sit down and get a rough idea of what you're going to expect for a guest count before making any other further decisions. Number four, so depending on kind of what your priority is here, your, your next step is to set a date and or your venue. So these kind of go hand in hand. Um, a lot of times it's easier to have a few different dates in mind and then to start venue shopping and see which dates that venue has available. If it's a highly sought after venue, you might be basing this decision based on their availability rather than the date that you have picked. So kind of understand that and go on with a little bit of flexibility when it comes to choosing your date. If you have a date that's very significant to you, say you wanna get married on your anniversary or maybe your parents' anniversary or grandparents, or if there's a specific significant date for you, then you're going to be choosing venues based off that date rather than choosing a date based off a venue, if that makes sense. So number four is kind of a trade-off between, you know, however that's gonna work best for you, choosing your date and or choosing your venue. So once you have your date and your venue picked, um, the fifth thing that you're going to do is get organized. So 
figure out how you're going to move forward with wedding planning, um, delegate tasks if you need to. It helps to have like some sort of wedding binder or maybe you want to do everything digitally. Determine how you kind of want to navigate the overall plans and what works best for you. Like for myself, I'm a very physical person, like I like to have printed out checklists and a binder and, and things that I can actually hold in my hands. And I've had clients and I know friends that are much more digital, so they like to have everything in like a Google Drive and have all of their contracts uploaded digitally and have all their checklists on the computer. So determine kind of where you stand in, in that and how you want to move forward with planning and create some sort of plan of attack and have those checklists and um, understand kind of what to expect when it comes to planning, when you should be booking certain vendors and kind of have a plan of attack for what your priorities are. And that brings me to number six, which is to discuss your priorities and your vision with your partner. So like I mentioned before, you want to make sure that you are kind of understanding where your priorities lie. And so this goes for both of you. Um, it's helpful to sit down and physically write out maybe what your priorities are. So say for you, you want to have really beautiful photos. So your photographer is probably going to be one of your highest priorities. So that means that you're likely going to book them sooner than other vendors. And you're also probably going to allot a little bit more of the budget to your photographer than you might in other arenas. So sit down with your partner and communicate what your priorities are, what their priorities are, and make sure that you can come to an agreement of kind of where your overall priorities go moving forward and how you're going to tackle those planning steps and booking those vendors. And that also goes with your vision. So be on kind of the same page as far as what you guys both want for your wedding and how you envision that happening. If you want a more laid back and relaxed wedding style, if you want something that's a little bit more elevated and elegant, um, just make sure that you can get, get somewhat on the same page before making any of the big decisions so that you're not having to, you know, battle between that once you're elbows deep in the wedding planning process. So discuss your priorities, discuss your vision, and then it's time to start gathering inspiration and really start to hone in on what it is that you envision overall for your wedding day. And this is when you can do all the fun stuff like create the Pinterest boards and figure out your colors and figure out your wedding dress and what kind of flowers you want and all that fun stuff. Really idea generation is, is next in this step so that when you do start to talk to all of your vendors, you have a pretty good idea of what it is that you're looking for and what it is that you kind of envision and, and, and what you want and be able to communicate that to your vendors. After that, it's time to start checking things off your list, booking those vendors, and if you're unsure of even where to go next, I will link a video above that will help you kind of know when to book each vendor and what to expect. When you set your date, understand kind of the lead time that you have to your wedding. So. 9 to 12 months is kind of ideal for planning a wedding and where most of my clients sit from the time they get engaged to the time that they get um, married. If you are getting married, if your lead time is less than that, I do have a video on planning a wedding on a short timeline, which might change just kind of your plan of attack for booking vendors, so check that out. And now that you've completed those six important steps after you've gotten engaged, you're ready to hit the road with all of your wedding plans. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe to get weekly videos on wedding planning tips and advice, and we will see you next week.